Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be wiring up. This is a video intercom system and we're wiring up to an electric strike, which means you can do cool stuff like this. Look, check it out. Got a key fob. Boom. The door, is unlocked. door is unlocked and it unlocks. So this is the first time I've wired up a video intercom system and I'm going to be showing you how I did it, how it all works with this system. But I'll also show you the methodology behind it, some of the tools I use. This is a voltage, multi-voltage adapter. This is a multimeter. How I kind of figured it out, because there wasn't any guide that I could follow online. And uh, electric strikes, they're new to me. I kind of want to put them all over the house now. Kind of enjoying this. So first up, I want to show you uh, the system right here. This is the monitor here. You press that button. And then it supplies power to this lock for five seconds, that's what I set up with. And then boom, it's now locked. So this is known as an NO lock, NO. There's also NC. This, this electric strike can actually operate as both NO and NC. NO means when there is current, it's open. And NC means when there is current, it's closed. So you kind of want it on NC. If, if the power is down, you want this to be unlocked, where you, you want it as NO, if you want it locked by default. So NO means it's locked by default, but when you supply electricity, when there's electricity being supplied to this fella, he's gonna unlock. And NC means when you supply electricity, he's gonna unlock. Hope that makes sense. Now in this lock in particular, you just unscrew this part. And this barbell decides on if it will be normally closed, so now it's open by default or normally open. It's kind of backwards, the NO, NC situation. But just remember, NO means you provide electricity and it opens up. <laughs> so I've got it mine set up as NO. So in the settings of this VIP situation, I said that I'm using an NO lock. And it's not a magnetic lock, it's just an NO lock. So in my particular case, this is my admin panel for my intercom. Check out the full video setup guide for the intercom if you want to find out specifically on the intercom I'm using. But inside local settings here, inside access control, local, I specified the door contact type to be NO. Remember NO, NC. So it's, it's NO here. And I've specified that it's not magnetic and my time is five seconds. So NO off five seconds and that makes it work. And Basically, with this electric strike, let me just show you it again. That you get four wires in the back. Actually, you get slightly more than four wires. Initially, when I first got this baby, it was actually connected like this. And uh, basically, I just took some scissors and I cut it. And according to the instructions here, it says, that the red goes with the blue and the yellow goes with the black and you provide 12 volts to get it working. So all I did was yellow with black, spun it around like this. I'm gonna tie this up of course afterwards and cut it to pieces and put like a little bit of fun stuff on it to make it nice and plastic sized. But I wired these guys together, I just spun it around like this and this cause I'm just using 12 volts. So to get this lock unlocked, you need to provide 12 volts. So this, over here, this is a multi-voltage charger. I've got this guy from eBay, pretty cheap. And it's cool because you can provide different voltages, you know, so it charges up different kinds of batteries and phones and all this kind of stuff. And it goes all the way up to 24 volts. Surprisingly, it works, so I kind of like that. So I'm gonna set it to around 12 volts. But what's cool about this multi-voltage charger, it did come with one of these pieces and it's got all the different ports to use on your different chargers. And one of them was this little bad boy here. Now this bad boy here, you just unscrew this piece and it converts this, this plug into wires, direct wires, so you can easily wire it up. So first, what I do is I get my multimeter and if you've never used a multimeter before, there's two types of voltages to mainly play with. The squiggly line, that means AC, and the solid line, that means DC. So you wanna go into the DC section now it has lots of different ranges. 300 means it will measure the 12 volts, but it's more accurate the closer to the amount of voltage you wanna, you wanna measure. So yeah, let's go with 20. And 
let's just put these two. There's usually a plus and a minus. So red goes in plus and black goes in minus. Don't worry if you get them wrong. So for example, I'll put them wrong here. And all it will mean is that the voltage that it detects, if I can hold this correctly, is just gonna be minus. So it says minus 12 volts coming through. So that shows that it's working. Obviously, if I did it the right way around, the polarity would be correct. And it says 12.2 volts, and that's the output coming through. So I do have 12 volts in the system. So all I need to do to get this lock unlocked is to put the red in the positive and the black, black and yellow into the negative. So I'm just gonna turn this off for a sec. Low voltage wiring over in Australia is legal for you to do yourself. Probably around the world, it's the same sort of situation. But if, you measure, if you're playing around with high voltage, you gotta, you gotta have an electrical license. So yeah, so it's kind of good playing with low voltage. So I'm just gonna put the reds in the positive and the black in the negative like that. And then screw it in. So now I wanna turn this guy on. This lock is unlocked by default because it has 12 volts pumping through it. So now I've verified that this lock works. That's good, that's one step of the process. You're testing each tool out individually. So now that I know this works, I can unscrew it and pay attention to the actual intercom. So the intercom that I've got, it's PoE, it's powered over ethernet. So I have this um, PoE super switch up here. This is Netgear, it provides all the voltage you can need. Now I've got a cable coming all the way from the PoE switch into my intercom unit. And this provides ethernet and power to power this device. Now this device also has a 12 volt output that should, in theory, it should have enough power to unlock this lock. But the problem is what I found is, even though, for example, if I measure this red and black, red and red, black and black, it does show, well, 11 and a half volts. When I plug it into the electric strike, it doesn't unlock because while it does have 12 volts, it doesn't give you the amount of amps needed to unlock this lock. So in the specification of this lock, it says 12 volts, but you need 200 milliamps. And in the specs of this intercom, I couldn't find the amount of amps that gets outputted with the 12 volts, but I did find it in this marketing page, hidden away, that it only outputs 100 milliamps. So the reason why the power coming out of this guy doesn't unlock this lock, it's purely because it doesn't give enough amps. So there's not enough watts going through to unlock that lock. So that's why you can't just use the power, at least for this lock. If you get a lower amped version of this lock, you might work. And if you do that, then you can play around with these wires and you won't need uh, a 12, you won't need a transformer to get extra power to that lock. But since I don't have enough amps to get this working, what you need to do is, you look at this wiring chart here, and if you fold this up, it kind of has all these little labels on it. And what I'm looking for is NO and COM. So NO is normally open, which is what I'm gonna be using, and COM is the communication port. So what you do in this situation, let me just untangle the wires, is you count to getting the NO and the COM. So I know that the COM is one, two, three, four, five, and NO is number six. So you get the wires one by one, one, you don't use, two, you don't use, three, you don't use, four is for NC. Now I did play around with it as you can see, but I'm not using that. And five, that is the communication port. So, we got that one, and next one, six, is NO. So I'll, I'll put these two to the side and show you what's next. So if you look in the manual of the intercom, again, it doesn't have one for NO and COM, but pretty much you can follow the logic of COM and NC, and the NC, the negative, gets provided from the power, and the positive of the power goes to the positive of the lock and the negative of the lock goes into the COM port. So what is happening here? Communication port is 
the conduit is the guy that gets triggered to pass through the electricity. So I've got some just wires here, just random wires I found around the, the place. I'm gonna treat this one as positive and the brown one as negative. Now they're all just normal wires. There's nothing to it. I'm just, this is just an example, so hold tight. So positive, here I've just put my positive wire in the positive and a negative wire in the negative. And I'm using this multi-voltage adapter as my power source for now. Perfect. So here I'm putting the negative into the NC, just connecting them up temporarily. Now I'm putting the negative COM because it's going to take the negative and connect it with the communication port. And I'm going to put that into the lock and that goes to the black one. And positive just goes straight from the power source. So I'm using this just wire, just yellow and green to indicate it's on the positive terminal. That one goes into the, the wire. Okay, so now we're connected up. So power is now coming through the power output. The negative side is going into this intercom and the positive side is going straight to the lock, but the lock is unlocked because what happens is when you unlock it, so I'm gonna fire the unlock trigger, the it then allows the power coming from the negative to connect via the communication port and that allows it to unlock for that moment because it's now in that signal. Now, if this doesn't work, what you should do is just verify that it should be working. So you've got a multimeter here and you put red. So you've got the red coming here. So that should be one connection. And you've got, first you've got the negative coming from the power supply. So that should be 12 volts on the multimeter. As you can see, we're getting 11 point, well 12 volts right there. And the communication port, there should be zero because it's not making that connection. But as soon as you unlock the door, let me see if I can be quick. The door is unlocked. You can see that it's allowing that voltage to pass through and then it will stop allowing the voltage to come through. So that's pretty much how it's wired. Now one bonus step I did here is I was just using this multi-voltage adapter for a test, test run. But what I wanted is just to have one power supply unit so I've got this PoE switch just here. And what I've got now is I've got an ethernet cable, the blue one. It's plugging into something called a PoE splitter. What that does is it takes the power from the PoE ethernet and it splits it into an ethernet port as well as a DC out port. And this one over in the back, it has 12 volts, nine volts or five volts. So I've specified here, I want 12 volts out. So this cable here, if I get my multimeter in there, just one on the outside and one on the inside. You should see I've got 12 volts on the multimeter screen. That's perfect. So now if I just plug this guy into my already wired connection, boom. When I unlock, I'm using this switch to give power via ethernet to the lock. All right, so that's the setup. I've now proven that it all works. Next step is to install it. So I'll do that in another video, showing you exactly how to install it on the wall, doing the run to the house, all that kind of stuff. Some things to note, if you do want to use the PoE splitter, get an active one. This one's TP-Link, it was $13 on, uh, from Umart. I did try another one from eBay. I got a passive one and that one just didn't work. This is a passive PoE splitter and it doesn't work. I've also tested it with a multimeter and there was no power coming out. So I'm gonna try using an active splitter now. I don't know why, I'm not sure. It said it would output 12 volts, but when I tested it with a multimeter, there was no output of anything. So I guess get a multimeter, verify that it's working or not. This one definitely works, PoE splitter, TP-Link, pretty cheap. If you wanna use the power from one of these devices, otherwise you can use something like a garden light transformer, Make sure you got enough watts. It's just 200 milliamps, so it should be good. This has also been a nice, very, very nice device just to make sure that the voltage will work. You can play around up to 24 volts. And the lock that I've got here is just the FES-10 from the FSH series. Hope that helps someone out there in the world. I remember when I first started this, I was confused. So I figured I'd share this knowledge. Let me know if you found this video useful. And of course, enjoy the show. 
Goodness. Mm -hmm. I was just I was just making the electric strike work and this little fella, he just went to go. This little, this little cute fella jumped out of it. Come here, little one. Come here, give me, give me. Put it back in the lock. <laughs> <laughs> really? He was in there inside as soon as it unlocked. He jumped out. <laughs> I don't know how he got in there. I don't know how he got in He's there. He's small, that's why. He's a baby. Right. Let's get you your freedom. <sighs> Alright. Goodbye, Gecko. Hope to see you soon. Go, you're free. I'll lock the gate for you. There you go. Bye bye. Don't go anywhere. I don't think he wants to go.